You're working hard to provide your customers with the best customer experience possible, whether that's through machine learning applications, chatbots, or mobile messaging. At Google Cloud, we want to make it as easy as possible for you to adopt virtual agents and bots, which need to be integrated with enterprise system and processes. That's why Apigee, which is Google Cloud's API management platform, has native capabilities to make it easier and faster to get started with conversational AI. The specific challenge we're tackling is connecting conversational AI products such as Dialogflow with your backend systems, especially legacy systems. Our goal is to make the deployment of bots and virtual agents faster, giving your team's time back to focus on innovation and give your customers a stellar customer experience with speedy replies and orchestrated responses. Let's talk about how Apigee can do this. Apigee is an intuitive platform for bot designers and architects to incorporate key business function and insights into the workflow. It acts as an API fulfillment engine, essentially enabling Dialogflow to talk to your backend systems. It does this in three ways. Your IT teams can get your conversational AI deployment up and running quickly while still focusing on other modernization efforts. Your conversation architects don't need to spend time integrating APIs. They can focus on building great voice experiences for your customers. And all your teams can build APIs once and reuse across different use cases. Apigee has native policies available within the UI that will make the API fulfillment process even more turnkey. These policies can parse Dialogflow requests, set Dialogflow responses, and validate parameters captured by Dialogflow. I built a simple flow in Dialogflow CX that allows someone to rent a car. The user is asked when and where they want to pick up the car. They pick a specific car, confirm some details, and their rental reservation is booked. Let's run in the simulator and see how it works. Hello. I'd like to rent a car. San Jose, California. No. June 13th, 3 p.m. June 15th, 9 a.m. Yes, that sounds good. Let's go with the charger. Yes. Visa. 412-341-234. John Smith. 2930 Pearl Street, Boulder, Colorado, 80301. 80301. It was easy for me to rent a car with this agent. The conversation was natural and the agent was responsive. You may have noticed a list of parameters in the simulator. Dialogflow allows you to store pieces of information and parameters. Some of these come from what the user says and others are retrieved from backend services. A big part of creating a good conversational application is integrating with backend systems. Dialogflow lets you specify a webhook to connect with backend systems. For example, I use the webhook in the list vehicle step of my flow. When the conversation reaches this step, Dialogflow will make a call to the backend system that has car inventory information. In this demo, I used Apigee to build a set of APIs for my agent. Apigee lets you quickly build and manage APIs. Apigee has two new policies just for working with Dialogflow. If we look at the step where the agent lists which cars are available, we can see that it uses the Get Vehicles webhook and the Search Cars tag. Let's look at the definition for that webhook. For the webhook URL, I provided the URL for the API I'm managing in Apigee. I also supplied a client key from Apigee that will be passed as an HTTP header. This client key identifies the application and lets Apigee control access to the APIs it manages. Next, let's look at how this API works in Apigee. In Apigee, I created an API proxy to handle requests from Dialogflow. I've configured a set of Apigee policies over here, and I have a series of flows that handle specific requests. The proxy endpoint preflow is called for our request. I also have four conditional flows that will be called depending on which tag is specified in the webhook fulfillment setting. In the preflow, there are three policies. The first checks the API key that is passed in the header. If the key is missing or invalid, an unauthorized response is sent, otherwise the flow continues. Next, I remove the client key header since it's no longer needed. The third policy is an instance of parse dialogflow request, one of the new policies for working with dialogflow in Apigee. 
Messages sent from Dialogflow have a JSON payload that contains the intent, session ID, parameters, and more that are sent with the webhook request. Pars Dialogflow request takes this information and turns it into variables that can be referenced in this Apigee flow. Let's turn on the trace and see how it works. If we look at the trace, we can see all the details of what happened in Apigee when the webhook was called. The request enters here, a number of policies are called. We'll notice here in the pars dialog flow request that a whole bunch of variables got created, and those were based on parameters that were present in our session in dialog flow. All of these will be available in the Apigee flow and can be used in different policies. We set a condition to follow a conditional flow based on the value of the fulfillment tag. In this case, the fulfillment tag was equal to search cars, and this was a post request. So that particular flow was followed and these steps were executed. Let's look at the flow that manages the booking of a reservation. This flow calls out to a cloud function. The cloud function requires authentication. The first two policies in here make a call to the Google Cloud Identity Management System. They send some credentials that I stored in Apigee's key value map. Those credentials are exchanged for a token that I can pass in a header to the call to my cloud function. The next policy is the call to the cloud function that will make a reservation. I send the token in several parameters that were sent from Dialogflow. The car description, the start date, the end date, and the location. Apigee then makes a call to the reservation service and reserves the car. The response is stored in a variable called reserve results. The next policy is an extract variable policy, and it's used to retrieve the reservation ID and the reservation total from the response from the call to the reservation system. Next, I use the set dialog flow response policy to send the reservation ID in total back to dialog flow as parameters. Dialog flow uses that information to confirm the reservation with the customer. Using Apigee to manage APIs needed by Dialogflow allows a conversation designer who's building things in Dialogflow to focus on providing an excellent user experience rather than worrying about how to integrate with enterprise systems. It allows an API developer to quickly build a set of experience APIs to support this application. They can hide away the complexities of the backend services. This won't be the last API we need to build for this project or something else that requires access to backend services, but establishing a standard pattern for this will save us a lot of time in the long run. Apigee and the two new policies specifically for Dialogflow make this easy to do. Now it's your turn to try it out and get started by following the links in the description below.